The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're mixing a vocal into a mastered beat. Now, what that means is we don't have stems to do the final balance of our a cappella and our instrumental. All we have is the instrumental run through some mastering plugins, full volume, full blast, and we have to take our raw vocal production and somehow make them work together. Now, this is not going to be a how to set up a vocal chain video because I've already used this song as an example and we've already gone through this entire vocal chain from scratch in a video I uploaded about a month ago and I'll put a link to that in the description and I'll also put a link to the finished song in the description but today we're gonna go through with the mastered instrumental and do four steps to help you turn your finished mix into your finished master let's start out by finding some spots in the song where the beat competes a lot with the vocal. So I'm just gonna skim through and just check the general volume of instrumental to voice. I see through the light, no more disguise. All right, that sounded all right to me. Let's go to the next part of the song. I love the beauty in front of me, giving back all the energy that... Now this isn't really a problem here either because we have all these background vocals come in. So we're still pretty good as far as voice to volume. Let's see what happens during our buildup. So we're going to have to do some very simple volume adjustment from here to here. Pulling back the volume of the drop would really kill the effect of the song, but we could totally get away with about two decibels of reduction here in the part leading up to it because of how loud it feels with the snare. So let's just do a hard cut down two decibels. The jump from full volume to minus two was a little bit sudden, so I'm gonna do minus one on this first piece, and then when the snare speeds up even more, it'll go down to minus two. bring this snare back so we have full volume on that snare during the uh, buildup. Boom. You would kind of repeat the same thing again during the later parts of your songs. The next thing that we're going to do is find the frequency that Kara's voice resides in the most and dip that out of the instrumental. And the plugin that we're gonna to use to dip it out of the instrumental is the Waves F6. This is a multi-band EQ, and we're actually only gonna use one of the bands of these because like I said, we're just picking one spot on the frequency range that her voice resides in the most. There's nothing I enjoy more than sweeping frequencies. So I'm just gonna pick a random frequency on here and just solo it. <laughs> I kind of felt loudest right here. That's what I'm listening for, where it feels the loudest. Everything else. Yeah, so right around 2.5, 3K. So we can unsolo this. We weren't using this one anyway, so I'm just going to leave that bypass the way it was in the vocal chain. And now we're going to go grab our F6, and this is where it gets fun. We're going to tell it to get its sidechain input from our lead vocal bus. If you go check out the tutorial of how I made this vocal chain from scratch, you'll see that I bust this to uh, bus one, which goes up here to the parallel compression. So we're gonna take this same bus and use this. So we're essentially sending our lead vocal to the EQ on our beat. 
and we have to tell this that we are doing a uh, external sidechain source and now let's grab the channel that we left on and it's already between two and a half and 3k so let's just kind of leave right where it was by the default position and let's go to our loud section and see it in action Beyond the lights of society you can see the words are pushing down the volume of this band of the instrumental and you don't really hear a hole in the beat because the voice is filling the hole that it's creating in the beat so we're just going to leave that running throughout the whole song because even during the verse it's going to be helping that vocal poke through just a little bit more Are your vocals sounding a bit weak sauce? Have you wasted countless nights only to be disappointed by your bland vocal mix? Maybe you're just missing the sauce. Introducing Lead Vocal Sauce, the powerful blend of Ableton effects that will have your raw vocals sounding so saucy you might just never use another plug-in chain again. Lead Vocal Sauce is available now only at Holeloops.com. The next thing that we're going to do is glue all of this together. So we're going to create a new bus, stereo, aux input, and we're going to load up a distressor on here. That's my favorite mix glue. I'm going to run this thing pretty high and pull the output volume pretty low. And the attack and release are actually in a pretty good spot. We're just going to switch it to nuke and probably pull back a little bit of headroom because we're going to be sending a lot of channels of audio to it. Let's start assigning channels to it. So we're going to tell it to get its input from bus 78. We can give it a nice rename. So you got our glue bus, our distressor channel, and now let's start sending everything to the glue. Option click to send that to full volume and also hold option and just give some glue all around. And in addition to copying it down onto all these vocal channels, I'm also going to copy the glue onto the effects too so that the tails of these reverbs are going to get sent to the compressor and brought up as well. I'm not going to send the parallel compression channels to the glue because obviously these are already compression channels, but everything else, beat and all the vocals beneath it, getting sent to the glue. Let's take a listen to the loud part of our song now and turn this parallel compression bus on and off and you'll hear how it just kind of glues everything together, makes it sound like they belong together to begin with and helps push the center of the song forward a bit more. I might want to pull, since our beat's already been mastered, I might actually pull this back about minus five. That way all the vocals are triggering the compressor about five decibels louder than the beat is. I see through the light, no more disguise. That's just going to help the distressor just shove the vocals up in your face when they need to be and shove the beat in your face during the drop. Now the final thing that you want to do is find the most transparent limiter in your collection. If you only have one limiter, then this step probably isn't for you, but if you have a couple to pick from, I really recommend you dial in the same settings on a couple different limiters and just compare them. So I'm going to try two or three different ones and we're going to figure out which one sounds the best because when you're running full blast audio with more audio over it, this is really when you're running the limiters algorithms to the ultimate test. My go-to limiter is the Precision Maximizer by UAD because we're pulling the volume of everything back a little bit, just pushing it kind of back up closer to zero. And when I record my tutorials, I have to pull the output down minus two so it doesn't clip. But normally I just keep that at full blast. 
The other limiter I want to test this out with is L2007. Now this is a Pro Tools only plugin, but sometimes this is the most transparent limiter. Let's do the same uh, minus two on the output so we get a little bit of volume matching. And I'm going to try and just switch back and forth between them and see if we can hear a difference. Kind of liking the coloration that the maximizer is adding but i'm definitely hearing the kick a little bit more with the l2007 i think i'm going to keep the precision maximizer on here let's try just one more limiter and see if we could get it even better something a little different let's try standard clip now this one may be even more colored when i use standard clip i like to uh hit the oversampling kind of high Let's check out the precision maximizer first and then switch to standard clip and see which one we like better. Out on my Oh, standard clip really jumped out nicely, uh, but once I, I had to dial back the soft clip saturation a little bit, probably because we're already dealing with audio that's been run through mastering plugins. Obviously, there's really not much you can do as far as pushing things or changing things, but as you can see with a quick limiter shootout, we were able to really figure out which one sounded the best on this source material. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you out of your sticky situations where you don't have access to stems and you can't send your acapella to the person who made the beat to mix it for you. Obviously this happens to artists and singers all the time. So I hope you found the tips and tricks in this tutorial useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time with another tutorial. Peace out.